not entirely sure what it looks like to give your all. I've just been thinking about that, like, what is it exactly, we hear all the time, you know, give 100%. What does that actually look like to give 100%? Or in every now and then you'll say you just got to give 110%. What does that look like? Amen? And just for the record, it's nice to hear your voices not muffled. Like, mm -hmm. sounds much better, amen? <laughs> amen, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But what does it look like, really, to, to give our all? You look at oft, oftentimes athletes or marathon people who run marathon. I don't know why you'd run a marathon, but if you run a marathon, right? But there's a sense, especially at the, at the end, when they're just really struggling and they're totally, and it's like, okay, that person. They gave their all. But did they really give their all? I've had the opportunity a couple of times to be in Normandy. And I must say that when you stand on the beaches of Normandy, there's this sense of people who gave their all. I mean, what more could you give than your life? We celebrated Memorial Day on Monday. That, that you give your all today, St. Boniface, a person who gives his all. And the reason I stress that is in the gospel today, the, Jesus points out that this woman gave all that she had. She didn't hold back anything. Just a really, really beautiful image. If you imagine they're in the temple and people are coming up and, and they're throwing money and these, these people, I'm sure, in fancy dresses and clothes and, and Gucci, whatever, I don't know what people wear anymore, right? <laughs> I wear a habit. It's not that complicated, right? So they're throwing in all their money, and then this poor little woman comes up, and it's really, really important because what Jesus focuses on is not necessarily the two coins that she gives, but he focuses on the woman. He says, this woman, right, this widow, she gave two coins. And he said she gave more than some of the translations say that everybody else combined. So, I invite you to not focus on the money that's given. And let me say that that's the first time a university president has ever said that. Okay? And when I ask you this evening for money, forget what I just said, all right? Because it's always about the money, all right? But just for the story here, because it goes with the story, let's not focus on the money, right? She gives two small coins worth almost nothing. Yeah, I mean, literally, two coins isn't going to build a building. Two coins isn't going to raise a mountain, move a mountain. Two coins isn't going to heal the blind, a leper, raise the dead. But it's not about the two coins. It's not about the gift. It's really about the giver. Yeah, maybe two coins can't move a mountain, but maybe the faith of a woman who gives two coins can raise the dead. He always is focusing on the woman and the widow. One could question whether or not Jesus was very good at math because he said she gave more than. It makes it very, very clear that Jesus doesn't see the see things the same way that we do. I mean, we, we would have a tally there and say, okay, they give this, she gave this. Clearly it wasn't more. But again, Jesus isn't looking at the coins. He's looking at the offering. He's looking at the gift with which she gave. Because the scripture says that she gave out of her poverty. That she gave out of her livelihood. When this woman comes and gives two coins, what she's really saying is, God, I believe that you're going to take care of me. What she's really saying is, God, I trust you. I trust you that if I give you this, you're going to come through that you're not going to let me down, that you are who you say you are, that you are faithful, because I don't have anything else tomorrow. But I'm going to give this offering, and I'm going to give you all that I have out of my poverty, out of my weakness, out of my brokenness. And you better come through, because I got nothing else. Have you ever given like that? The Lord delights in that. And what does it look like, right? What does it look like for us to give in such a way? How, how is it that, that it impacts us? Because what, what she's doing is she's giving, as Scripture says, of her poverty and of her livelihood. But most of the time, if we're honest, we give of our surplus. It doesn't really cost us anything. And again, I'm not talking about the money. 
What does it cost us? What risk is there? What step in faith is there? And this is what moves Jesus' heart. This is what is able to take this poor little woman that says, compared to everybody else, this woman is different. Amen? That this woman has faith. That this woman has given more than anybody else. What's it look like for you and for I to give like that? A year ago, a little bit over a year ago, we at the university were praying about what are we going to do in the middle of a pandemic? And what are we going to do if students to come, don't come back? And what are we going to do about even opening our doors when most of the schools around us were not opening? And they said, we'll just go to online because it's safer or whatever it is, right? But we thought differently. And we make this step in faith. And I don't know if you're aware, but what we did is all new students last fall, we said, you guys can come for free. We're not going to charge you tuition. Lord, you better come through on this. <laughs> Seriously, you better come through because we're a poor school. And we received over $3 million worth of donations to the step in faith, right? Because we give. So we're talking about whether or not we're going to have conferences. And we said, that we said, we're going to have conferences. And people around us says, I'm not really sure that's a good idea. Why don't we go online? You could do really, really good things online. I said, no, we're going to have people. We're going to have butts in seats on Franciscan <laughs> University, right? Right? So we're signing contracts. We're signing contracts. And we're putting out money. And it's like, oh, Lord, you better come through. And three days ago, all restrictions of COVID are lifting it so that we're gathering here, amen? But, but what does it look like for you? What's it look like for you to give your all? To give of your livelihood, to give of your poverty. There's something different about that. There's something different about giving out of our surplus. And we always ration. We heard last night, Chris said that, the, the God doesn't ration, but we always ration. We ration our time, we ration our energy, we, we ration our money, all of that kind of thing. But what does it mean to give our everything? But I suggest some of you know exactly what this is like. Having a son or daughter, and, and they, they seem to be lost. And in a moment of, of fear and anxiety and not sure, you say, Jesus, I just give you my daughter. And I trust that you're going to take care of her. That, that, that total, that's, that's giving of your weakness and giving out of your poverty and giving out of your brokenness. I suggest that for some, it's, it's a prayer that I make every now and then. I don't make it often because I don't want to remind God of it. But just every now and then, I'll make a prayer that says, God, I give you permission to do whatever you want to do to me to make me holy. Or, Jesus, take away everything in my life that keeps me away from you. I suggest that that's a prayer out of poverty, a prayer out of weakness. I suggest that some of you who stood up last night and not sure what exactly it means to give your life fully to the Lord and to surrender your future and to surrender your will, and to place before him your hopes and your dreams and your desires and your future. And to put that before him and say, Jesus, I give you everything. And you are willing to stand up. You see, remembering that, we, that Jesus doesn't look at us the same way as the world does. And he looks at this woman who gives two coins and says, that's more than all the others. It could be possible that somebody who stood up last night was more courageous than the men and women who went on the beaches of Normandy. It could be that the Lord could look at you and say, you have given more than everyone else. And I thought Peter shared so beautifully last night that he wasn't able to do, that he wasn't able to stand, and he wasn't able to fully, radically, and profoundly, totally give of himself. And the beauty of the moment when he came to realize that that's what the Lord wanted. And the freedom that he experienced when he stood up. Because the Lord doesn't see like we see. Amen? It could be the prayer of my mom, who's 85, she's 84. She actually gets, she gets mad when she, I say she's 85. She's 84, all right? Seriously, after 80, it's just showing off, okay? So let's just, it's, 
whatever, right? She's 97. I don't really. And my mom used to, my mom for decades went to Mass every day. And she did all kinds of things. She led cursios, she led retreats, she was led the youth group, all of these things. Mom can't do any of that anymore. And she shares with me how, how frustrated she is that she's not able to do all those things for the Lord. And she sits in her chair early in the morning, and she lights a candle, and she prays. Perhaps giving more than she's ever given before. Because the Lord doesn't see and measure the same way we do. We're about to come around this Eucharist, and then we're going to take bread and wine, and we're going to pray, and it's going to become the body and blood. And Jesus is going to give us his everything, holding back nothing. And he invites us to do the same thing. What does it look like? And what would it look like for you to give your all? To give out of your poverty, out of your brokenness, out of your fear and your anxiety and say, Jesus, you better come through. Because if you don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I suggest, brothers and sisters, it's at that moment that we discover what faith is. We discover what faithfulness is. That we allow the Lord, perhaps honestly for the first time, for us to be able to experience what it is for he to be faithful to us. So, let us give our all out of our poverty and see how the Lord returns the favor.